How's it going guys? We are going to be doing the uh, subscriber question and answer video. This is a response video to that one I've just posted. And uh, anyway, Dog Tag Mom, we've just been out doing some, doing some, running some errands and uh, some shopping. And she's going to read the questions to me and I'll give the answers, okay? So go ahead, hit me with the first one. Okay, Kyle Kiblinger. He says the first of AR-15 you bought... So Kyle Kiblinger said the first AR-15 you bought, the Smith & Wesson M&P MOE, yep. you have two flip-up sights. The lower sight, did you change it or is that stock? Um, those did not come on the, the rifle. When I bought that rifle, there was nothing, no sight system on it, no, no sights. And uh, those particular ones are YHM, Yankee Hill Machine. Those are their uh, spring-loaded flip-up sights. They're the same plane version. What's cool about that rifle is that uh, most of the uh, the gas block, Picatinny gas blocks that you saw before that was uh, primarily, um, uh, they were the gas blocks were lower, and so you had to get like two different size sights. Anyway, that one is the same plane as the Picatinny rail on uh, the aluminum upper. And so you can get same plane sights. So that's what they are, the YHM same planes. Yep, so great sights. And cheaper than Troy. Next. Okay, next is from Adias. I, I, I don't know how to say Adias, it. Adias, Adias. Adias. Yeah. Um, it says, can 9mm plated bullets be loaded into 380 brass? Manufacturers give bullet diameter but not bullet length. Is there a difference yeah. between 9mm and 380? Well. Yeah, there is. The case length on, on the 380 is a lot shorter than a 9mm. And so if you're going to be loading a 115 grain bullet into a 380 case, you've got to watch out for, comp for uh, overly compressed loads. So what you're doing is you're putting a specific powder coat or a powder charge inside of the case. And if you're putting a regular powder charge, uh, but yet putting a longer bullet in the case, you're going to compress that powder and you're going to actually keep, cause spikes over over spike in pressure, and that can be that can be really dangerous. So what you want to do is you're going to want to have you're going to want to back off your load a lot and work your way up in charges and watch for pressure signs. So because yeah, you know the the bullet diameter is the same. You have you shouldn't have any problem loading your casings with those bullets, uh, but uh, length of the bullet is going to be the big playing factor in that. So start low, work your way up. Next. Okay, next is from 410 Mossberg. It said, did you sell your Mylan 357 lever gun? I have been contemplating buying one, but I really wanted a pre-run Marlin. Yeah, the pre-runs the pre or the, uh, the JM marked carbines are really, really hard to find and they're going to be very expensive. Um, the one I had was a Marlin, was the, um, the Remington made Marlin. And it was a decent gun, and in, in fact, I really, really liked it, but I did sell it. Uh, not because it was a, a Remington-made Marlin. I thought, I think, you know, you can work with them, and I think you can make them really, really nice. Uh, but for the most part, um, I sold it because I'm not a, really a gun collector. Most people probably wouldn't believe that, but I really don't collect a lot of guns. In fact, I sell and buy quite a few of them. Um, and I just couldn't see that fitting into my system at the time. I thought I would pair it up with a nice uh, 357 revolver and I ended up deciding I wasn't going to do that right now. Uh, mainly because of some ballistic stuff that I wanted to work with and I didn't really want to get into a lot of hand loading with the, um, with the 357 right now. And so I just figured I'm going to get rid of it. I got a really good price on the sell, which was nice, uh, which helped me decide it as well. But uh, yeah. I got rid of it. So, but they're great guns. I mean, if you come across one, you know, pick them up. They're they're awesome. So. Okay. Next from Mike Powers, he says, if you lived in a state like California, as I do, would you get out as fast as you can, or would you stick around and fight the good fight? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> it's a hard question to answer because, well, there's no real right answer to it because if you stay and fight, then you're then you're working towards something better. The way I'd answer it is this. If I was in a position where I was single, where I was mobile, I didn't have a lot of ties dragging me down, I would get the heck out of that state. 
if I if I had a lot of ties, a lot of family there, I mean, I've been there for a really long time, I would fight as hard as I possibly could to get uh, local and state representatives that'll actually vote uh, pro-gun and pro-constitutional rights. The, the whole thing is, is, is uh, when you're living in that state, you are you're under oppressive uh, uh, oppressive laws, and it's really, I mean, that's a that's a tough tough thing to do. It's something that you're subjecting yourself to in order to you know, I guess, win the fight. But uh, you know, we need good people in the state. But at the same point in time, you know, man, I'd probably leave <laughs> if I had the if I had the chance. So anyway. Okay, next from Norwegian Ballistics, he says, Hi there, dude from Norway, you're up here. Are there any possibilities for you to make a review on some long range rifle scopes? I am especially interested in the Shepard line of products, and particularly the 618B1A. I just ordered such a scope and um, will be getting it in a couple of months. I had to buy online directly from the US. Okay. Um. I've never heard of the Shepard products, so I can't I can't really comment on those. As to long range scope reviews, I've already done some st uh, scope reviews on the Vortex Viper PST series. Great scope, I think it's one of the best banks for the buck on the market right now for for what you get for the price you pay. And uh, so, if you're really interested in some some good bang for the buck scopes, go for the Vortex Viper PST series. I'm going to be getting into a lot more long range. I've got some long range builds coming up that I'm I plan on doing, and uh, you'll be seeing some some different glass on on those scope or on those rifles. And uh, so anyway, yeah. So there'll be some there'll be some of that coming up. But uh, as to the Shepard scopes, I can't really comment. Hit me. Hey, Hotta G for life says, where can I find the gun laws for my state? I've been searching around and it's all old laws. I currently live in Hawaii. If it's really strict, um, it's really strict. I can't own automatic rifles or buy until I'm 21. Okay. Um, the best place I've found for handgun laws is uh, the website handgunlaws.us. Handgunlaws.us, and they've got usually they'll have uh, gun laws. Um, organized by state and they'll have like a web page for your your particular state and if you're looking for like you know stuff on on like uh, class 3 weapons like automatic weapons go ahead and they should have a link to your state's laws and so you can go to them and, and read all about it so um, the other place you can check for class 3 weapons is the ATS website they'll have they'll have um, information pertaining to each state next okay next from Ian Wolf says so Skittles, M&M's, or both? Um, M&M's, for sure. And then he says, do you live in a rural or, sub or a suburb area? Um, more rural. Yeah. And how does your extended family react to your gun hobby? I don't know. How does our extended family act to our, our gun hobby? My side of the family is there's no problem. Um, we kind of come from a pioneer stock family, and... Uh, guns have always been a part of part of our family life. My wife, being from from Canada, her family there's she's got two brothers that live in the state that actually are open to guns, but the rest of their rest of her family are very um, um, they're not they're not okay with it really. <laughs> so so yeah, it's kind of a foreign thing in Canada, you know. Guns, yeah, it, yeah, like, guns. Well, guns shouldn't be a foreign thing. Except that's the for funny hunting, thing. that's all they're really used for over there. Yeah, so. yeah, that's right. So, uh, anyway, that's a whole other topic, but, yep. Okay, do you reload, and if so, will you do some bids on it? Yeah. Um, in fact, today, I just picked up 200, 200 uh, bullets. Hey, hey, Reese. She's, she's sleeping. Noah, reach down in that green case right there and pull out those orange box boxes. Open those cases right there. Yeah, the the answer the short the short answer to the question is yes. I do re, I do reload, and I have done some videos on reloading. I've showed you uh, my 308 reloads that I've done. I've changed up my my load for hunting this year. And uh, anyway, the other one's full, dude. But uh, 
Anyway, so I've been working up a new load, but yeah, I could do some more reload videos. I, they tend to be really boring unless you're into reloading, so I might, uh, I might do some reloading vids. Uh, a little more of them anyway. So, but I have done a couple on the channel, so you can check check out the older ones. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, I do do I do hand load, mostly rifle. So, MS says, how do you feel about the 10 millimeter cartridge? I love the 10 millimeter. Um, yeah, these are the bullets I just picked up. These uh, Burger okay. 168 grain VLDs. That's what I've been uh, shooting this year out of my 308. So uh, they uh, they've shot pretty well so far. So that's what I'm that's what I'm hunting with. Uh, the 10 millimeter is a great lamp, great round. Speaking of reloading, it is a reloader's dream cartridge, uh, mainly because it is a bit a bit more expensive. It's not really that bad. It's not it's not so expensive where you can't shoot it. Uh, so you know, but it's on the upper end of expensive handgun cartridges. But the greatest thing about a, a 10 millimeter is you get you can load up to some pretty hot loads, like seven, eight hundred foot pounds of energy, like, and then you can put some pretty heavy hard cast bullets in them, like 200, 200 grain bullets, things like that, and it tends to really be a hot loading. And so, you know, for the most part, it's a great uh, personal defense round. It's a great round for woods defense, like for bears or uh, other predators, and. Uh, and yeah, and, and also a great hunting bullet as well. So I know there's a lot of people out there that do hunt with the 10, the 10 millimeter and it's a great, great round. So yeah, I do love it. Next. Okay, Miguel Delgado says, can you tell me when you're using your GoPro can camera, where do you mount it and get the best shooting angle? Okay, well I do, for the most part I use my GoPro, like right now, this is being filmed on the GoPro, and I'm gonna, I'm recording audio with my um, eight, our HDR CX 110. Yeah, I think that's what Sony. it is. The Sony, Sony Handycam. And so I'm recording the sound through the Sony because the sound through the, the GoPro pretty much sucks. Um, but uh, yeah, it's mounted on a suction cup to the windshield right now, so it's like a, it's like an auto, the automobile um, mount. But for the most part, I just run it on a tripod. So, I mean, just point it at you and go. So it's pretty, pretty forgiving camera. So, yeah. Next. Okay, and Mr. Grambo1 says, how many guns do you own? <laughs> uh, good question. <laughs> I don't even know, do you know? I have no idea. Yeah, she probably wouldn't. Um, I don't know, I really don't know the exact number. Um, I will say that I probably don't own as much as people think I do. Uh, my, like I said, I think I mentioned before, I'm not really a gun collector. I don't really have just a ton of guns. Um, I don't have them just to have them. If you were to look at my gun collection, you would probably see practicality. I mean, pretty much every gun that I own, I could probably tell you the purpose of the reason why I have that. So I'm not into shiny, like, really shiny collectible guns or anything like that or really old guns most of my guns are of practical purpose uh, but as to the number you know I've got several so <laughs> but yeah so good question next okay Mike Dawes he says if you could only pick one gun for each of the following which would it be concealed concealed carry mm -hmm. um, the shield, m and M &P shield, the Smith & Wesson, by, by far. And now they have one without the, 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 the safety switch. Perfect gun. Next. Okay, home defense handgun. Um, oh, there's a lot that can go in that. What I would say, I probably couldn't tell you an exact one, but I will say that usually you want to lean towards the like duty size weapons, like, like Glock 19 or larger. Uh, for that, you know, might as well, you know, you're not, it's just sitting on a, a nightstand or whatever. My current home defense handgun is the Smith & Wesson M&P Core, the 5-inch model, so. Okay, and your home defense rifle? Um, home defense rifle? Any subgun. Any pistol caliber carbine. Okay, a bug out gun? Uh, okay, so... <laughs> 
bug out meaning, okay, I'll assume that bug out means that your house is obliterated, there's no place for you to stay, and you need to travel. And if that was the case, I would pick a really, really nice uh, 1022, throw 500 rounds in my pack, and go. Next. Okay, uh, long distance gun. Okay, long range bolt action. I'd probably take a Remington 700. Probably one with a better barrel like a, the tactical models or the police model or the uh, like the models with the AAC barrels. They're really, really nice. Um, other than a Remington 700, I'd probably pick like um, a Savage 111, something like that. 308 is my favorite caliber for long range for out to a thousand. Yep. Best 22 rifle. 1022. Next, Ruger 1022. And best 22 handgun. Um, probably for semi-automatics, probably your Ruger Mark series. Uh, Browning Buck Marks probably close follow with that or equal to. And I'd probably say revolver. I'd probably say Ruger SP 101 or the 617 Smith and Wesson. Next. Okay, Chris Kelly says, what are your current thoughts with people carrying rifles into businesses and making the stores decide on if <laughs> they want to allow it or not? Do you think people are going about it about it wrong and carrying when carrying a rifle into stores? Yeah, I do. Um, here's my take on this whole open carry rifle thing. I think it's a bunch of a bunch of guys that have misdirection and I think I think they're doing more damage than they're doing good. And not only that, but I think most of these guys are attention starved and think it's pretty awesome that they can walk into a store and have everybody looking at them, okay? Like, seriously, it's, it's like, I really think that they're thrill seeking, to be quite honest. I think they think they're badasses because they are carrying a, a rifle into the store and look at everybody looking at us and we're so sweet and awesome. Like, I'm not against open carry by any means. I've open carried, but I don't open carry a rifle. For instance, if, if you got somebody carrying a rifle towards a restaurant in which I'm sitting, I guarantee you I'm thinking about where my handgun is on my person or it's out and it's sitting on my lap because I have no idea what their intentions are, okay? Like, for me, a rifle is for war fighting or for battle, not for open carry, okay? Handguns are for open carry. I open carry occasionally, especially if I'm out doing shooting, I just keep my holster on me and I'll just take it and wear it around, but I will not hand, uh, open carry a rifle. And I think these guys are thrill seeking and I think that it's been detrimental, if anything, to the cause of open carry and not the opposite. Next. That's all I gotta okay. say about that. Um, what camera <laughs> are you using on this? The audio, the audio quality is... I already awesome. answered that. Okay. Is there anything else to that? Uh, they want the make and model. Um, oh yeah, it's the camera. Sony HDR CX110. Next. Okay, what kind of dock are you? What kind of doctor? Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is kind of a sensitive subject, mainly because there's privacy concerns uh, with with it, and I just I just really I really have chosen not to talk about my profession and career um, in association with my YouTube channel, mainly because that is my livelihood. That is what supports and keeps my family alive. Uh, so I'm going to refrain from from mentioning what I do. I, I am a doctor, I do have patients, and that's pretty much what I'm going to say about that. So. Okay. Good question, though. <laughs> um, Benagan, Benagan West C85 says, how do you normally carry and what do you carry? Any recommendations for LCP besides DeSantis Nemesis? Okay. Um, yeah, I do carry the Ruger LCP, probably my most my most often carried gun. Um, besides the DeSantis Nemesis, you can go with a 
a plethora of in the waistband and out of waistband carry. Uh, the Ruger LCP really excels at appendix carry. For those of you that don't really want to have a long gun poking you, um, appendix carry is really nice with the LCP. So, dude, there's a lot of, there's pocket, there's like wallet holsters for that. There's a lot of different options for it. So, uh, pick your poison and go for it, yeah. Um, what else I carry is, uh, I carry a um, Springfield XDS in 9mm. That's what I have on me today in a white hat holster on my right side. And, um, and I also carry a, occasionally my, my uh, Glock 19, 4th gen. So I'll, I'll carry that as well. So anyway, yep, next. I'm just gonna. <clears throat> okay, Cole Vimo says, if money was not a problem, what would be your favorite load, load out like rifle and everything on it? What handgun or sidearm with any extras? Okay, uh, rifle loadout would be, um, if money was no object, right now I'd be buying me a Desert Tech, it used to be Desert Tactical Arms, uh, SRS. Probably in 308 with a with a swap out conversion, a swap out uh, caliber conversion of like 300 Win Mag or a 338 Lapua. Probably with a Night Force scope on top or maybe a, a Leupold uh, Mark VI. And and or I'd probably buy the Reaper, the LWRC Reaper. I love that rifle. And if it if I get one in a 20 inch barrel, which I think they might make one. Uh, I would probably have that with the same with a Mark VI on top from Leopold or um, yeah, that's probably what I go with Mark VI. So if not, money's no object uh, for pistol wise, probably my M&P Core. I love that thing, man. It's awesome. Next. Okay. Um, I Y N 1911 says, can you show us your video equipment? Can you give us a review of what works for you and what has not? Uh, yeah, yeah, I could do that. Um, I'll probably, I'll probably, uh, what I'm, what I'm, I've been using is my HDR, that camera I've already mentioned, and my GoPro. I'll probably end up, uh, doing a review on my camera that I just purchased, which is a, um, a Canon 70D. So, there's going to be more, uh, more to come on that. So, yeah, just look for that in the future. I'll do it. Okay, Campfire Talk says, your preferred non-lethal option. What's up, Campfire? Uh, non-lethal? pepper spray. Any chance for FAQ videos in the future? FAK? Yeah. Uh, first aid kit. Um, yeah. Yeah, I could probably do that. I've got, I've got a really decent level two, soon to be a level three setup that I'm, uh, that I've put together for the, for the family. So yeah, that, that could definitely, I could definitely do that. So yeah. What else? And your favorite movie favorite movie. I don't have a favorite movie. My favorite genre of movie is sci-fi fantasy. Anything Star Wars, Star Trek, Lord of the Rings, uh, Back to the Future, Hobbit, Willow, Goonies. Those are all good. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Jay. More. I'll tell you what's a good movie though was that uh, Edge of Tomorrow yeah. with Tom Cruise. That was a freaking sweet movie. That was one of those movies that at the end, I was like staring at the credits, like just kind of trying to figure it out. Like my brain was like expanded. It was cool. Anyway, next. Your mind was blown. My mind was blown. Um, Emily Blunt's, Blunt's hot too. <laughs> Jay Palazzano says, how did your wife do on her run? How did you do on your run? He's probably talking about the marathon. I'm not sure which one you're talking about. <laughs> probably the one that we were going to do a video yeah. on and you kind of chickened out on. Because I, well, I, last year I ran two marathons and I did really... Come over here so they can see you. <laughs> I can't. So last year I ran two marathons and... This year you ran two halves. Yeah, and this year, like in the springtime, I ran two halves. And they both went really well. I'm not sure if I'll do another marathon until I get faster because I was kind of slow, but um, it just not that slow. But yeah, yeah I was I was a, li average. a little over average. I was a little over or a little under average. Yeah, yeah, a little under average. Um, but yeah, it was fun. 
but I want to get faster if I'm going to do another one. But I like that. I like the distance of the halves. It's just perfect. Yeah. It's a challenge, but it Full doesn't kill your really body. Full marathon really hard on your body. Yeah. Really hard. Don't let anybody it tell you that it's It took me not. like three or four days before I wasn't sore afterwards. Yeah. And I ran a 5K. Log yep. uh, Doc Tack's son and Doc Tack daughter, she, they ran 5K with yep. me this they year. Yeah, ran 5K. So that was cool. And I beat them. Yeah, by like a, a thousandth of a second. <laughs> so, yep. It's good. She's a running fool. Next. Okay, Kevin the Tech Daddy says, when are you going to be on Tech Daddy Live? I don't know. When are you going to invite me to Tech Daddy Live? <laughs> Next. <laughs> James Doctor says, what types of AR, ARs chambered in 556 do you recommend? Ah, good question. Um, I'm not a I'm not an AR-15 snob in any way. In fact, uh, for the most part, all of your major manufacturers like Smith & Wesson, Bushmaster, Wyndham Arms, uh, Rock River is a great company, um, Colt, Noveski, I mean, if you're really, Noveski, LaRue, LWRC, um, Adams Arms, I just did a review on one of those. Uh, those are all really good options. I mean, there's only a couple brands, like, like a couple that I would really not, I'd probably stay away from. I don't like DPMS. I know that there's a lot of people out there that have them and that they shoot really well. I just like a little bit more fit and finish, and that's really where DPMS uh, lacks. Olympic Arms, I'd probably stay away from. Uh, but for the most part, you know, like Stag and all these other ones, as long as they're like commercial or or at least, you know, like have decent bolt carrier groups, you know, the best thing about, the, the things to look for in an AR-15 is top-notch bolt carrier groups and barrels. Pretty much everything beyond that is going to be the same all across the board. But look for mil, look for your more mil spec um, bolt carrier groups that have been high pressure tested and uh, magnetic particle inspected. Uh, make sure that those are that that your bolt is a really really nice bolt and and look for I like one and eight or one and nine twist rates in your barrel. Other than that, you know, it doesn't really matter. I mean, Bush I have Bushmaster and I have I've had. Uh, Bushmaster, Rock River, Smith & Wesson, Adams Arms. I've had all of those, and I think all of them are just great. There's really hardly any that, that are that are bad. So, anyway, next. Okay, Muff17. We're going to have to probably break this into two videos. Anyway. Okay, Muff17 says, what's your favorite EDC blade? Uh, my favorite EDC blade of all time, probably, like EDC, is probably the, the uh, Victorinox Cadet. For an EDC blade, uh, for like a crossover blade that you can use for both, would probably be the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. What I have on me today, pull it out here, is the uh, is my Microtech Socom Elite. That's what I'm carrying today. It's not an EDC blade. My EDC blade today, which this isn't planned, <laughs> is a. Uh, the black Victorinox Cadet. Surprise, surprise. So, anyway, those two are awesome blades. But, uh, yeah, that's my favorite. Go. Next. Okay, next question is from Gun Geek. Yep. It says, the Spanish Destroyer Carbine is awesome, am I right? 9mm Largo, baby. Yeah, it's awesome. It's cool. Aaron Valter say, says, how old are you and when did you start shooting? Um, I'm in my mid-30s. And uh, I started shooting when I was probably Doc Tack son's age, or probably a little, yeah, probably right around seven or eight. So I've been shooting my whole life. There was a long period of time when I was in the world of academics, uh, going through school, and I didn't really have a lot of time, and I didn't have a lot of money. And so I didn't do a lot of shooting then, but I've always had guns, always. So, yep. Okay, Magnus Dom Dominus says, how many video channels do you have? Uh, one, this one, and then Doc Tack Bomb has Doc Tack Bomb. Which isn't very... Which he doesn't do anything. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, like, so I try. I really try to get active. him to do it some more. Anyway, next. Okay, Blue EDC, why don't you make more knife videos? Um, oh no. Our, wait, is that not playing? Okay, yeah, it is recording. Okay, good. I thought for sure it wasn't playing. Uh, what's that, knife videos? Yeah, why don't I need you to make, make more knife videos knife here. Hold on to more knife videos. Um, why do I not make more knife videos? I don't know. 
My knife videos just don't get as many views, for one. But uh, that can change. I've got a bunch that I need to actually do reviews on. So, so yeah. So that's probably it. I probably just don't think they get as many views, and so I don't do as many. But you know what? I'll have to come out with a couple knife videos here because I got a couple I haven't even shown on video. So, next. Okay, Donovan Paulson says, "Are you an amateur radio operator?" Nope. <laughs> next. Okay. <laughs> Big guy five twenty five says, "Do you?" Or have you done any reloading? We already talked about yep, that. Yep, already talked about it. KMD1234 says, why did you become a doctor? Um, I followed in some, some family's footsteps. And uh, some of my family members' footsteps. And, oh, and I also just enjoy working with people. And uh, the, the medical arts was always always something that I was interested in from when I was young. I knew I wanted to be a doctor when I was 12 years old. I made a plan and I never looked back. So I've known since I since I was 12 I wanted to be a doctor. Next. Hey, Nicholas says, want to go shooting with me sometime? Sure. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan K, he asked, what kind of doctor are you? Yep, already answered that one. Matthew Dempsey says, what was your first gun? My very first gun was, my first gun that I ever bought, ever purchased myself, was the Ruger LCP. My first gun, I had lots of guns before that. My very, my very first gun, though, was a Rossi uh, Pump Action 22. And I've actually got a video on that one, so you can look back through it. Yep, so that's cool. Okay, All American Family US One says, "What is your profession?" Answer that one too. <laughs> I know, I know it kills you guys, but I'm sorry. I just, I just can't talk about it. Anyway. Okay, next. Robert. Um, I'm a doctor. That's what I am. Robert Cat Cat Catton says, "Do you like Nutella?" Who doesn't like Nutella? Seriously. Yes. Love Nutella. I love Nutella. Listen. This is the best thing to do for a snack. Take a spoon, do half crunchy peanut butter, okay? Extra crunchy is even better. And then scoop the other half of Nutella. Dude, you got a Reese's peanut butter cup. Next. Peter Jensen says, favorite carry round or brand? Favorite carry round is the 124 grain Spear Gold Dot plus P or standard pressure, uh, nine millimeter. And my favorite brand are uh, the HST and the Spear Gold Dot. So anything HST and anything Spear Gold Dot is pretty much good to go. Next. Okay, Ian Wolf says, have you ever had to draw your defensive weapon? Nope. Thank goodness. Never have. Hopefully never will. And that's the end. That's it? Mm -hmm. Oh, sweet. We're only about uh, 33 minutes. Maybe I'll post this up as a one solid video. But anyway, guys, uh, I'll probably do another one of these, you know, like, uh, while we're out traveling around, we might just, uh, we might just make some more videos like this. So if the, if you guys like this, go ahead and hit the like button. Uh, let us know that you want to see more of this kind of stuff. And, uh, if you guys aren't subscribed, hit that subscribe button too as well. That that's always good. Anything you want to say? And oh, also, bombard DocTac Mom in the comment section and tell her to get on her get off her fanny and make some more videos for us. Yeah, that'd be awesome. So, anyway, guys, that's a that's just a quick little question and answer. If you guys like this, though, let me know in the comments if you guys like uh, like this kind of video. And if you wanna, uh, I was gonna say you could probably leave questions down in the comments below. But you know what? I'll just do another video in before I do another one of these uh, Q and A's. I'll uh, post a quick video to let you know that you want to put put the, the their, your question to that video so we have a list to go off of. So, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Catch you next video. Say see you later. See ya. <laughs>